Hello, hello. My name is uh, Jones, and uh, today we are going to look at another part of our Unit 1 where we are going to look at care of the patient undergoing surgery. Uh, within uh, this lesson, we are going to look at perioperative care. Perioperative care has got three phases. There is care before the patient goes for surgery, there is care of the patient during surgery, and there is care after the patient goes for surgery. So we have what we call before surgery, we call that phase preoperative phase. Then during surgery, okay, or during operation, we call that phase intraoperative phase. Then after surgery, we call that postoperative phase. So this lesson is going to concentrate in looking at preoperative phase. Okay, so perioperative phase, we are looking at management of the patient going under surgery from pre operative phase, intraoperative phase up to postoperative phase. Okay, so the objective of this lesson is that you should be able to define perioperative care and also the phases of perioperative care. We will look at care in preoperative phase in this lesson. Then we are also going to have another lesson where we have broken down the preoperative phase in the general care of patient before surgery and also care of patient who is due for emergency surgery. So the, the care is different. The person who is going for an elective surgery and the patient who is due for an emergency surgery, the care is different. So that is why we are going to look at these components at different levels. Okay, so postoperative care will be in a different uh, lesson that you're going to look at. Okay, so when we say pre-operative phase, at pre-operative phase, this phase begins when the patient is scheduled for surgery and it will end at the time of transfer of the patient to the surgical suit or operating room. That is the pre-operative phase before surgery. So before surgery, from the time you admit the patient in the ward up to the time the patient, you take the patient to theater. Okay, then uh, the next function here is that of an educator, an advocate, and a promoter of health and safety. So in this lesson, where we are looking at pre-operative care, the objective is to ensure that you have the knowledge about the patient's physical well-being for them to withstand an operation and also the effects of anesthesia. When you have this knowledge, then you are going to select uh, patients that are fit for operation, okay, without uh, complications. You are going to do vitals that will act as a baseline in establishing that the patient can withstand uh, theatre. So within uh, this lesson of pre-operative, the objective is to promote physiological well-being of the patient. So as a nurse, you are going to promote the physiological well-being by allaying patient's anxiety as if if patient is anxious, it may raise blood pressure and affect the um, affect the, um, surgery. Okay, so with anxiety comes hypertension. Okay, so patient may ask a lot of questions. It's a sign of anxiety. So the other objective of perioperative, uh, of preoperative, is to provide patient with the psychosocial comfort and also promote confidentiality. So those are some of um, the some of the objectives that we need to appreciate apart from other objectives of preventing infection and ensuring that the patient is spiritually prepared for the surgery okay so now in looking at perioperative activities 
we are coming up with our own a profanema. So a profanema is a framework, okay, a framework of dimensions in which patient may need care, may have deficits that a nurse can identify and care for. So from the word a profanema, you just take these alphabetical letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G H I J and then N P O. So these alphabetical uh, letters coming from a profanema will help you plan your pre-operative activities. So A is for M. Okay, you need to have your M for the care of the patient pre-operatively based on your knowledge about surgery, based on the knowledge about patient's condition, okay? So you are going to draw up the aims. The aims are mostly to prevent complication, to prevent infection, and to promote quick recovery. So those are some of the common, commonest uh, general aims of surgery. Why come up with aims? Because you need to have a direction of what you want to achieve in, uh, in in the surgery that you're about to undertake. Okay, so we have said um, the emergency care of a patient pre-operatively, we are going to look at it different uh, in a different lesson, okay? So A, B, C, D mostly apply for emergency situations. So A, B, C, T, a, B, C, D in pre-operative activities, okay, constitutes airway, breathing, circulation, and D for emergency drugs or pre-medication. Okay, so these A, B, C, D are quite cardinal in uh, any emergency care of a patient who is due for, uh, who is due for, elect uh, for an emergency surgery airway, breathing, and circulation. But for the purpose of pre-operative activities uh, or to do with surgery, so this mnemonic C also stands for consent. Okay, C stands for consent. D stands, still stands for uh, pre-medication or drugs that you are supposed to give. Then E is for exercises. E is for environment. Of, of course, all these are coming from a profanium. And I am saying that these are very, very, very important. So exercises, exercises before surgery, or you teach patient exercises that they are supposed to do post-surgery in order to enhance healing. Environment, okay, you need to uh, admit the patient in the right ward, okay, with the right equipment that are supposed to be uh, there as they are awaiting uh, as they await to be operated on. F is for fluids. Okay, there are different fluids that can be given to the patient in order to improve uh, circulatory volume. Okay, but F is for fluid, and also it is important if patient is due for uh, a major surgery, you cannulate the patient. So you cannulate the patient for fluids. You cannulate the patient for administration of general anesthesia. So F is for fluid, F is for drugs that will be given, okay, that is intravenously. So that's why we have come up with F in the mnemonic for fluids. But we have to remember that if this fluid is in reference to the cannula that we are supposed to insert for administration of anesthesia, for easy resuscitation of the patient in theater, okay, and also for fluids that can be given. Then G is for gown. Gowning helps prevent infection. So uh, gowning is also very important. Then H is for hygiene. Okay, H is for hygiene. Hygiene here is to do with preparation of the patient's okay, local area that is going to be operated on. H is also for handover, the handover that you have to give. So remember, these letters are not arranged in a chronological order. 
but see, they are arranged in this alphabetical manner for easy memorization of what you need to do for a patient preoperatively. Okay, then I is for investigation. Okay, you need to do investigations for elective surgery, investigation that can be done for emergency surgery. There are investigations, special investigations that can be done because it's an emergency. Then I can also be, it's also important in pre-operative uh, for identity. Identity of the patient containing age, sex, okay, weight is quite helpful in pre-operative. So patients should have their identity, okay, identity band. Okay, then uh, J is for removal of all jewels. So jewels, jewels needs to be removed to prevent electrocution or prevent them from falling back. If someone has got some artificial teeth, they may fall back and bring about problems of electrocution and breathing. So J is for remove, for jewelry. So remove all jewelry. Okay, then N is for nutrition. Elective surgery, you might need to improve nutrition status, but nutrition here, it will help patient to recover well fast. Then P is psychological care. Patient who is about to go to for operation may have some may have some anxiety. So psychological care is very important for all patients. Psychological care position it can be any any position, okay, uh, that the patient is comfortable with. But P you have to use it for psychological care and maybe position. Then observation observations can be done to help patients, okay, so that you have baseline data, okay, and establish that patient is fit for operation. So these A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and N, P, O simplifies your understanding of preoperative activities. Okay, to expand these a little bit, okay, we can start, let's say, with environment. The patient will be nursed in a surgical ward, and the environment where the patient is nursed should be clean and well ventilated to prevent infection and allow free circulation of air for optimum exchange of gases uh, between the patient and the environment. The environment should also be free from noise. This is to help promote rest and also promote comfort. Okay, environment should be safe uh, in the way that if, uh, let's say, um, they are cleaning the environment, there should be proper labels so that the patient does not fall. So put clear labels so that the patient does not fall on those shiny floor or the patient does not fall from any spirage. The patient bed must be well made with clean and dry bed linen to prevent infection and promote uh, patient's comfort and thus improve patient's self-esteem. So uh, that is to do with the, the environment. Other elements to do with the environment is that you must have good lighting for, for good observation, okay, uh, for good observation of the, of the patient and also within the environment, good lighting will also help for visibility during performance of medical procedures. Then uh, position, the patient can be nest in any comfortable position depend or dictated by the condition or depending on the condition. So all these are coming from the ABCD, uh, okay, mnemonic that we have written and I've said it is derived from the aprofenema. Okay, then uh, psychological care, okay, this is the care that is given to the patient to a certain psychological state and attends to their uh, psychological reactions to disease and also hospitalization. The aim of this care is to ensure mental well-being of the patient. This will be done following interventions like explaining the condition to the patient. This will allay anxiety. Furthermore, the disease process should be explained to the patient in simple terms so that patient can understand the outcome of the procedure. Also, 
you need to explain to the patient the investigations uh, that are being done in order to gain cooperation and it should include laboratory and radiological investigation that are being done. So you explain why these procedures are being done. Also inform the patient about uh, the theater environment. You see certain lights there, a table and the likes, all these things you need to explain to the patient, okay? So that they can understand, okay, that they're going to meet the surgical team that work in that environment. And this will give the patient foresight of a theater environment and prepare them uh, psychologically. You can allow the patient uh, to ask questions and ventilate their fears. Okay, this will help to allay anxiety also. Reassure the patient of the competence of the healthcare team attending to him, such as the surgeon, the theater nurse, and other healthcare team, like the anesthetist and all those that work within the theater. You can explain to the patient what to expect postoperatively in terms of tubes, drains, and some food restriction in order for patient to know that these things will be done to promote recovery. You can involve hospital chaplain or pastor to provide spiritual, uh, spiritual care depending on the patient's religious affiliation. Spiritual care is very important as it improves a motivation of the patient and hope that everything is going to move on very well. Then consent for surgery, which is C in our ABC. So an informed consent is a legal document signed by patient or his relative to signify that they have understood the process of the operation and are willing to allow the operation to go on. The consent of the surgery should be countersigned by the doctor or the nurse. Before the patient signs the consent form, the surgeon or nurse should provide a clear and simple explanation of what the surgery will entail, possible risks, complications, disfigurements, and disabilities, and also what we expect early and late postoperatively. The patient also personally should sign the consent form, okay, as um, if at all they have reached the legal age, okay, and also um, it will help to protect the team that is going to work on them and also protect the patient that um, all procedures have been done according to what was considered for. If patient does not qualify to sign, a legal guardian or next of kin should sign the consent form on behalf of the patient. In case of hysterectomy or sterilization, the husband's permission should be obtained. That is if him the husband is um, is alive, okay? And uh, this procedure has to be done. So the husband's permission. So an hysterectomy has been performed to mean uh, uh, this woman will not have uh, children. So it is important, okay, that uh, the husband is explained to and is around. So in an emergency, the surgeon or medical superintendent will sign the consent if there are no relatives okay so in uh, pre-operative care also history taking is important if patient has had surgical operation before and taking note of reason of surgery is important in the history taking we can find out about past illnesses history of chronic illnesses such as uh, tuberculosis hypertension diabetes epilepsy even allergies okay so it, when you find out about allergies, for example, it will allow you to be aware of the drugs that the patient might be allergic to and avoid these drugs. Okay, then um, physical examination. You can do a thorough patient examination from head to toe by inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation to detect any abnormalities. So you can take note of a uh, texture of the skin, hair, and detect any skin lesions and signs of poor nutritional status. You can check ears and eyes for any anatomical abnormalities and discharges. So HP Comp Lab, okay, constitutes the investigation that you can do 
in the mnemonic. So H, that is history taking. Then P, physical examination. Comp, computerized investigation that can be done like scan and X-ray. Lab, laboratory investigation like blood for cross match and the likes. So those are some of the important things to do with the investigations. Okay, so for physical examination, uh, so for physical examination is palpation, percussion, or scoutation, and also inspection. So that is what is important when you are doing a, a physical examination. Okay, so that is it. PP, okay, uh, PP, that is for palpation, okay, palpation, percussion, PP. Then I, inspection, okay, inspection. So inspection as the uh, part of the physical examination. Okay, so other things as discussed in the ABC, okay, includes nutrition status. If patient's nutrition status, okay, does not make them uh, fit for operation, needs to be improved. So that is in the NPO. P for psychological care, then O, observation. Observation, you need to have baseline observation. So in the next lesson, I'm going to look at the emergency care of the patient who is due for surgery, or what type of emergency care that you're supposed to give to a patient who is due for an emergency surgery. Thank you.